People with diabetes can end up with many foot problems. The scariest and most problematic of these is a diabetic foot ulcer. My name is Dr. Andrew Schneider and I'm a podiatrist in Houston, Texas. A diabetic foot ulcer is a hole that forms on the bottom of the foot. It's a complication of diabetes that can lead to infection and even amputation. In today's video, I'm going to discuss some of the ways that you can minimize the chances of forming a diabetic foot ulcer. Before I do, let others know about these videos. Please like, comment, hit the subscribe button, and share on social media. This will help others find the information they need. I also wrote a book all about diabetic foot ulcers. You can get it for free at www.footulcerbook.com. When you're diagnosed with diabetes, there's a lot of information thrown at you. Lots of information about checking your blood sugar along with the devices to do so, things you can eat, things you shouldn't eat. It can get overwhelming. Along with that is usually information about how to care for your feet. That's because much of the effect of diabetes is focused on your feet. In fact, caring for your feet properly and making sure they stay healthy will help prevent the complications that affect your feet. The most severe of these complications is a diabetic foot ulcer. First and foremost, in order for your feet to be healthy, you need to be healthy. I can't overstate how important it is to control your blood sugar. Whether you take insulin or use medication, maintaining a healthy blood sugar level minimizes the adverse effect of diabetes. But medication isn't enough. It's also vital that you manage your diet to minimize sugars and foods that break down into sugar. It's not a choice of one or the other. You have to do both. This will help to prevent the two big risk factors for your feet because of diabetes, peripheral arterial disease and peripheral neuropathy. Peripheral arterial disease occurs when you have poor blood flow to the feet. When this happens, you're at greater risk of forming diabetic foot ulcers. An already existing ulcer won't heal when you don't have enough blood flow to your feet. That's because the blood carries oxygen and healing factors to the site of the ulcer. If the flow is restricted, these important resources can't make it there. I may do a circulation test in the office called an ankle brachial index, or ABI. This simple, quick, non-invasive test compares the circulation in your ankle to the circulation in your arm. It's our first line of defense for treating a circulation issue. If I do find there is a potential problem, I'll refer you to a circulation specialist who will do more advanced studies and treatment to restore blood flow to your feet. One last thing about circulation. Smoking seriously compromises the peripheral circulation. If you add diabetes and smoking together, the risk is extraordinarily high. So whether you're diabetic or not, I advise you to stop smoking. It's not worth putting your feet and your life at risk. Peripheral neuropathy is also a serious complication of diabetes. It leads to a numbing of the nerves in your feet. This may lead to a breakdown of the skin as an ulcer forms and because you can't feel it, you wouldn't even know about it until it's too late. The issue with neuropathy is that it occurs gradually, so you may not even realize that you're losing feeling in your feet. Because you may not be aware of your feet having less sensation, it's good to develop the routine to inspect your feet every night before you go to bed. Look at the bottom of your feet and between your toes. What you're looking for is any redness, blistering, callousing, bleeding, soreness, sores that form, or pus, anything that wasn't there yesterday. If you see something, you know that it's no more than 24 hours old. If you catch a problem early, we can often get on it quickly and get it healed. It's also important that you wear well-fitting shoes. 
Shoes that have enough room for your feet without causing areas of pressure. A blister caused by a shoe can easily form into a diabetic foot ulcer. You should also not go barefoot, even around the house. When your feet don't have good sensation, you can step on something and not even realize you have something in your foot until you inspect your feet that night. And if you don't develop the routine of inspecting your feet, it can lead to disaster. There are two ways that I use to predict the formation of a diabetic foot ulcer before it forms. The first is when you're in the office. I use a system called Revelix to identify any areas of increased temperature of your feet. It's been well established that there's an increase in temperature before a diabetic foot ulcer forms. Revelix is able to take a thermal image of your feet and identify areas of increased temperature. Another tool that I use to monitor the risk of developing a diabetic foot ulcer is with remote patient monitoring. I utilize specialized socks or insoles that are designed to monitor the temperature of your feet. If there's a change that may indicate a problem, a message is sent to our office and a team of nurses to alert you to the potential problem so we can address it. The fact that there's so much technology being dedicated to the prevention of diabetic foot ulcers should indicate how problematic one is when it forms. Sometimes you can do everything right and an ulcer may still develop. But if you do everything you can to keep your diabetes under control, it minimizes these chances. In next week's video, I'll discuss how a diabetic foot ulcer is initially treated. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Please take a moment to like, comment, and share on social media. Be sure to hit subscribe so you won't miss another video. I also wrote a book all about diabetic foot ulcers. You can get it for free at www.footulcerbook.com. The link is in the description. If you're concerned that you may be developing a diabetic foot ulcer, don't wait. Contact the office and we'll get you in for an immediate appointment. That link is also in the description. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.